never going to do a dual boiler, um, and we're never going to do steam. So the, the thing, I, I don't know if I actually want to cover this because I, I've written extensively on it. So I'll just say very, very quickly that steam on mm -hmm. boilers is actually not great. Um, it's got a lot of problems. It's actually quite wet. Uh, it peters out. Um, and so uh, the steam that we're able to do on the machine over here, let's see if it's powered up. I mean, it just, it's just much better than you will ever get a boiler. It's 170 Celsius at five bar. Uh, the maximum a boiler is allowed to do is 2.8 bar of pressure. So by having open to atmosphere steam, um, Okay. But like a dual bar, I guess just the ability to, to do both, but not the actual the power. power. So this machine oh, okay. here, uh, this is running 10 amp steam. Okay, so okay. 10 amp on a 230 line, and it's awesome. So I'm 21 seconds to heat 200 mils of milk, which is like a commercial machine. It's, it's, that's quite good. The, the, the microfoam is really good because it's super dry. Um, so in order for you to make espresso and make steam, I would need to give you a 10 amp plug and then another plug to espresso, which is oh. not allowed, right? The alternative would be for me to give you weak steam while you made espresso, and then for the steam power to increase when your espresso ended, which would be a bad experience. Um, mm -hmm. So uh, no, we're not gonna do steam during brew. We are making, as far as I'm concerned, the best steam in the world by going to super high temperatures, super high pressures, um, calibrated Steam One tips. Um, so this is Zubing's latest Steam One tip. It needs cleaning. Um, I've talked to my staff about that. Um, but if you want Steam Mall Brew, um, get two machines. Um, UL will not allow us to put two plugs. And my main goal is saving baristas time in cafes. And to do that, it's to give them more power. So that's an experimental 10 amp machine that is, um, uh, we just ordered more heaters. 10 amps is the maximum we can do on a 230 line in a home. Mm -hmm. In order to go to 13, 15 amps, uh, maybe even 20, uh, we need to change the plug and the certification is different. And um, that's an R&D and that might happen. But I also, I don't, uh, I mean, I've used machines that heat 200 mils in six seconds and it just makes terrible foam. So if we're really fast, but the drink quality is poor, I don't think that's a game. Does like does like the shot when it when you're when you're steaming milk, does the shot like die or lose? I don't know quality because it's just sitting for a few like thirty seconds or no. Uh, if I, the, 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 there is an argument that mm -hmm. espresso gets bitter mm -hmm. as soon as it cools, and yeah. it's been well established that that's um, bullshit. Um, the, the, the espresso is bitter. What is changing is your ability to taste it. And, oh. <clears throat> and that the hotter something is, the less you can taste. Uh, you can there's an increase in the ability to taste um, a liquid that increases until 30 Celsius. At 30 Celsius, you can now taste everything. Um, when an espresso comes out and it's around 60 Celsius, you, you can't taste much. Um, so when an espresso is going bitter, as it cools, it's because it is bitter. Uh, and your ability to, to taste it is increasing as it cools. Uh, uh, the World Brewster Champion, Willem Davies, started a trend and then tried to convince the other people that uh, he drinks his espresso cool. He lets them sit for several minutes. And he managed to convince most of the other uh, World Brewster Champions that he was absolutely bang on right. Uh, in fact, if you want to drink an espresso and really taste it, you should A, let it cool, B, dilute it. Yeah, I, know, I actually, um, I have like an RO system and it makes, you know, like little perfect ice uh, cube things. Yeah. And I just put one of those in there and people, I mean, everyone thinks it's weird, but I think I like it. So yeah, and it tastes better, uh, yeah. especially if you're doing light roast that's very uh, floral or fruity. Um, when that thing's really hot, you're just going to taste strong. And, and mm. So sorry if I react negatively, but no, uh, I mean, I, I feel like we are what we are because we've made very different decisions um, mm -hmm. to go high tech, to go sensor based, and to just be uncompromising that quality is the most important thing. Um, I remember years ago, <clears throat> the, one of the 
top two biggest espresso machine companies said, come visit us. So you do. Um, and, and at one point in the meeting, they said our priorities for the company are number one, speed. This is of the machine. Speed, reliability, and third is drink quality. Of the three priorities, drink quality is last. And I said, that's right. funny because I'm exactly the opposite. I'm drink quality number one, reliability number two, speed dead last. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and they kind of yeah, like, I guess if you're in the home, it doesn't matter about speed if it takes you an extra minute. I don't know. I think a cafe is good. You know, I think 80% of cafes make bad coffee. So uh, I think there's a real opportunity for cafes to start making things their customers enjoy more. If they have to and, wait 10 seconds more. Well, and the, and the problem is easily solved by a second group in a cafe. Um, you know, cafes are usually used to using two and three machines. Um, part of that is that uh, they need the groups because they're all hands-on with the DE. A lot of what they need to be doing, their hands are freed up because most of the processes are automated. Um, and so to, to put an extra group on to steam isn't, uh, number one, it's super cost competitive on our end and, uh, and the steam is really good. So, you know, the other thing that when John said uncompromising and boo be who decent espresso is, uh, it's also about the small footprint. And if you stuff a boy, even if you put in an old school two ounce boiler and, and we do some magic to make that work better, it still makes the machine bigger. And, and the machine doesn't need to be big. It's already making the best espresso that you can make uh, mm -hmm. currently on any machine. And so it, it, you don't need a behemoth uh, machine to, to do that. And yeah, you do yeah. give up the steam and brew, but a second head takes care of that.